Hi again. In this five minute tip, we're going to take a look at a method of placing objects on the surface of another object, usually a larger one. And we're going to look at a couple different ways to do that. But the focus of the tip will actually be uh, the way that I usually use, which gives a uh, much higher degree of precision when placing the object. So there's a couple different uh, methods here. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is the result of my method, and I'll get into that in a bit. So what we have is we have some, some trees that are placed pretty much exactly on the surface of this landscape object. So there are a few other ways to do this. And I think let's start by taking a look at the blank scene. So the blank scene consists of a tree model that I created. It's beautiful, I know. And uh, as you can see from its shadow, it's, it's definitely not touching the landscape. So the focus of this tip will be getting it to touch the landscape. The uh, second project I have here is the landscape using a cloner. So this is a way to put lots of trees on the surface of a landscape, uh, but you don't really have much control over exactly where they go. Now I know that um, uh, some of some of my viewers may know more graph pretty well, and they may they may know that there are other ways to do that. So for instance, um, if I'm not mistaken, you could create a polygon selection and restrict the trees to just that selection. But I'm looking for even more precision than that. So if we jump back into my landscape file where we haven't done anything to the scene yet, I'll show you guys the trick really quickly. Cinema 4D is a strange program in that a lot of its features uh, overlap. And, and I'll show you what I mean. So we have this tree object and we want it to stick to the landscape. Okay, so we want to constrain it to the surface. So we use a constraint. But the constraint is actually in the character menu. So let's take a look at that. If I right click an object and I say character tags, there's a constraint. Okay, so you see we have a few different constraints available to us and none of these really look like they do the job. But there is one that will do the job. It's called a clamp constraint. So if I select clamp, we now have a clamp constraint and a constraint tag on this tree. So the way it works is right now it's clamped to an origin. But what we want to do is we want to clamp it to a surface. So at this point, we need to give it the surface or the object. Even with origin, you need to give it the object. So I drag my landscape into the object slot. And now we can see that the tree is indeed constrained to the landscape. And it's not allowing me to move it much closer to the landscape without it flying away. But this isn't really useful to us. What we need to do is we need to constrain it to the surface and we need to reduce its distance all the way down to zero. So now, as we move this along the mountain, along the landscape, it sticks to the surface. So that's the tip right there. Um, once you have this tree, you could then make copies of it or create an instance. So we have an instance now and we can just control drag the constraint onto the instance and all of the settings come along with it. So we can then move the instance and copy another instance and another one. And we could even go from the top view and we can just start placing trees exactly where we want along this landscape, being pretty sure that they're all sticking to the landscape and not intersecting the geometry in strange ways. Now, there is one catch and this is pretty important with using this technique. If you save this file and close it, they will all go back to the position of the of the first one, the position that they were at where you added the constraint. That's kind of strange because things in Cinema 4D don't normally do that, but I'll just warn you that this object will. So your workflow should be to place the objects exactly where you want them, sort of, uh, sort of just fine tune them and say, okay, I want another tree right there. And then either get rid of all the constraint tags, just delete them, or what you can do, let me just make sure I have all of them selected here. You can select all the constraint tags and you can say lock position. This way when you save and you open the file, they'll still all be in the right place. So I can actually show you a demo of this. If I close all of my files and then I go to my recent files and I open up the landscape end file that I have, 
you'll see that it looks like there's just one tree, but I have all these objects. But the minute I click on one, they all remember what position they're supposed to be at because the position is locked in the constraint tag. So there's the tip. Um, it's an interesting one. The constraints are well worth playing with, but this is just one use of the constraint. Um, I use this particular surface clamp constraint when placing bolts along the fairing of a motorcycle model or placing any sort of machinery along an uneven surface. And the coolest part is when you're done, you can just select all the tags and just delete them and your objects just stay there. But remember, if you're going to leave the tags on there, you have to click the lock position box before saving and closing the file or they'll all go back to where they originally were. Uh, one last thing worth noting, when the lock position checkbox is checked, you can't actually move them. So that makes sense, but it's just worth noting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tip. Uh, please let me know if you found it was useful. And I know that this is one of those tips where there's probably a lot of other ways to accomplish the same thing. If you guys feel like sharing some of your techniques, let me know. And until next time, see ya. Thanks for watching.